Yeah, so just using one of the poles or a dial of any sort of variety, we can actually start to just give ourselves a bit of um, practice of getting through the range of movement that the shoulder has. So we've loosened it all off. This is just kind of a continuation of our mobility conversation we've been having for the weekend. In CrossFit, they talk about these dislocations, which I think is an awful name for an exercise. So we call it an overhead rotation with a bar, a bar overhead rotation. But we should be able to get into range of movement. Think about um, how wide your hands are. The wider it goes, the easier. We can also make it easy for ourselves by not gripping the bar. But what we're allowing ourselves to then do is just cheat a little bit. So try and keep that flat position. So grip it straight, so we're in a neutral grip. And then come through and kind of come around without popping the rib cage. Keep something switched on. And back over. Feels like it's like cracking and then get around here. Smooth. And then like one comes and snaps down like it should be a smooth, steady, controlled movement. Yeah, expose your shoulder range of movement. And then also just try a little one. You can go, so bum behind you, palms facing forward. Can we just lift up into that position without wanting to raise? So keep locked in tight. And then just mobilization, just a bit of activation of pulling through into that shape. So I just do some 10 reps or so. But it's this shoulder extension we're going to need for the bottom part, whether it's a bar or a ring muscle up, that bottom part that we need to get to in the start, at the end of the transition, the bottom of your dip, that we need good range for. Um, and think, think about what Tim, as Tim's going through that there, he's taking that shoulder through that 360 degrees. So movement, create, trying to create range making sure he's got control through that range, but then we need to make sure we're getting then some strength through all those ranges we're going, going to be taking the shoulder through. So we sort of like that right from the beginning. Range, strength and control through those ranges. We're going to be starting in that overhead position for our muscle up at the bottom of your, of your pull up, making sure I again, almost do like an active hang. I'm not pulling really against him, but I'm getting that shoulder blade pressure and I'm going to squeeze them, take the arms apart to the side that's squeezing the shoulder blades back together so they're coming down and engaging with the back and then on the way up controlling them not letting the band boom, pull me up so I'm in control of my shoulder blade I'm not fighting Einstein this. no one laughed at my guy I'm waiting for someone to go Einstein didn't invade those he discovered it I can't wait to put that on social with someone's Newton. definitely <laughs> Newton who did I say Einstein yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what we <laughs> And then the last one. Oh, Newton. <laughs> that was the joke. Um, wide so we did, when we were doing our handstands, we did wise because we're really focusing on that position. There's a couple of other shapes we can go into. Um, this is going to, again, target those. Run boys, middle of chapter two. Making sure now for a final one that we're having to work hard to maintain body alignment. I go into my Y without arching up so it all comes from the shoulder. Hands as high as I can again. If we can, can we bias external rotation? T, A, W. On the W, it's dead easy to be hand down, elbow high. The external rotation is hand up, elbow down, and again, get that Euro, squeeze it between the shoulder blades. That's one, Y, T, A, W. That's two. So we do, we're going to try and do like a set of ten of those. Ten, we go tens on ish on as well. I'm, I'm, no one's going to come around and can you give you burpees if you don't do ten. <laughs> and if you're loving it, do twelve. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it should help to weight your shoulders up a little bit, guys. So have a grab a, grab a piece of kit, move around just Sweet. again, freestyle it a little bit. Three of those. So external rotation of your yeah hands yeah, there, <laughs> rather than your brain wants to go. Because look, your hand goes. If you do do arch your back up, yeah. put your hands up. Watch, are your hands high? Are they high? No, are they high? Yeah, they're high. Mm. But it's because you come up here. So when you come down, I want your hand to come high because you move your you move your you extenuate it there and you squeeze back here. There we go. Yeah, those go there. No weights. Huh? That was exhausting. It. <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> I definitely need to work with my shoulders. Yeah. Good. Ring muscle up is easier than the bar muscle up because you've got there's a few bits about the exercise which make life a little bit easier. Um, mainly because you look at the so with, with the with the rings we've got this space between the rings that means we can go through them during the transition. The, the, the muscle up consists of obviously pulling up at the top and pressing out from that position, but we've got the mid that middle section where we've got to transition either between the rings or around and above the bar. 
This space between the rings allows us to stick our chest um, in between them. Whereas on the bar muscle up, unless you're Superman, you ain't breaking through the middle of that. So we have to come around and above it and land on top of it. So we have to pull a little bit higher. Whereas with the rings, it's that little bit easier because you can go through the middle. The bit that's difficult about it, Tim was explaining about false grip, you, you, need to, you need to then put your hand on the ring where you want to finish up. Because we, can't, we, haven't, got the, we haven't got the luxury of moving our hand on the ring because the ring moves about all over the place. Whereas on the bar, the bar's fixed, we have the luxury that when we get to the top, that little feeling of weightlessness, we can actually let a little bit of rotation happen on the bar. The bar isn't going to move. But that will happen automatically when you start going through that transition. You don't need to really think about that, the brain will move. So that's what that looks like. So we'll start with the ring. So our force capability is effectively going to look like that. So if I'm in my start position for a pure like ring muscle up, I'm going to want to be somewhere in that position. We're going to teach you guys to start it from here because we can get you into a stronger place. The reason that's difficult is you guys can hang in that shape, but false gripping in that position is quite hard because as soon as we slip out of that position, we're dead in the water. So we can't, we're not going to complete um, the ring muscle up. So we're going to basically what that looks like is it means we're going to, going to lay the hand or the ring across the hand diagonally, and then we're just going to grip the ring and then we bring it. We have to we have to cock the wrist and create this flat tabletop position on front. It can't be, and as soon as you get anywhere out of that, you're not going to have the transition because what happens is when I pull from that position, I'm going to come through, thumb comes to the chest, I'm going to push my head through between the rings, and then all that happens is the wrist, the elbow shifts from below to above, but the hand stays still. So, you like Jacko says, we're putting the wrist in a position I need to finish my dip in. That's where it wants to get to, yeah, but I've got to, to pull in that shape. You're going to find out soon that hanging in that shape, if you haven't done much of it before, is pretty uncomfortable. But it does come with practice and time. But you have to be careful on how frequently you load it. So just, just open the shape to just show again a big, big thing on it. It is not on that bone that's going to hurt. Yeah. yeah it's across the fat pad. But if you go, you can take it across there and like be really over it. And you'll go after a bit, you'll go, flip the neck, it really is that that's sore on that bone again. It's that fat pad of your hand. So it's across on the fat pad. So, first thing we're going to do just to try and get you better into that position is mobilise your wrist out a bit. So just find a bit of space on the floor. <coughs> we did this way for handstands. So we're just going to spin it around and we're going to take put the knuckles down, hand on top, and just then from that shape, we can try and keep the hand flat. You can twist and rotate, come forwards sit back again these can get quite tight so don't go snapping something just relax just gently put some pressure into it but just let it sit there hold it for a second 30 seconds or so just let it sort of relax again get the rotation to be really around so wind it so that your elbow starts to point backwards towards you it actually nicely complements the opposite of so that being wrist uh, flexion in your handstand, we talk about having good wrist extension, so it's nice, it's the opposite, full range of the opposite so it hurts end. both ways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's about you having good end of the day, having both. <laughs> yeah, if, you've got, if your wrists are tight, they're going to be probably tight both ways. Okay, and this video doesn't have to worry too much about rotation. It's all hands. Yeah, you do both sides. Yeah, make sure you do both sides. And, and to be fair, even though we're not trying to go into this position, I quite like just once I've done a load of there, just get back into mm -hmm. just freeing up both sides, just so it's just trying to look after the wrist. And if you don't, like we felt, you just start hammering loads of false grip, then you're gonna those. So when you're gripping, we talked about it's really good for your shoulder, but the, obviously when you grip, you can see that those um, flexors start to they're working. And when you start gripping in here, because they're flexors of the wrist. They're then gripping as part of the fingers, but then they're also cranking on as part of the wrist flexion. You're just starting to work these guys a little more than they used to. If you go chasing after that ring muscle up because you're just super pumped for it, if you don't look after that tissue, it's going to start to uh, show itself on the inside of your elbow. Just because you're just winding that stuff up. Just like any joint, try and keep it healthy, strong, and Alright, cool. So let's get practice with this pulse grip. 
So just come around where you can see the rings. We've got a few set up. There's some more down the bottom. Uh, we're not going to try and lower these top ones because they're kind of set pretty high, but there's a set down the bottom we can shift. We're just jumping it out. Again, save a little bit of gas in the tank for um, what we're going to do for the back end of the session as well. So um, the false grip you can get into a couple of ways. Once you get comfortable with it, just getting your wrist over the top of it and just bringing the elbows up underneath is going to set you into that position. You can also take the ring out to the side, so if you hold it through, palms on top, grip it, bring it in. And the other one that people do is grip it high underneath, then slide the rings down. Mm. The key really to getting it right is just keeping the elbows in close, and you'll feel the shape you need to be into. Then you can start to play around these different positions. But that's our first um, hold position. All we're going to get you guys to do to start to feel it is just can you get into that false grip? Can you come into a sit position and then our job is can we just hang? It might be to start off with you just not feeling that comfortable, so don't have to take your full body weight. But can I just hang in false grip? That's our first job. So find a strong point, get comfortable with the false grip, hang, and then we'll look at can we pull and we'll look at a deep dip and then we can talk about the transition. Not that complicated, but just like three or four parts. It all stems from this, so just see how that feels. Be aware of what you're doing, what your body's doing, and we had just already just then, you were like, straight away, you felt that it was slipping and you knew it. A lot of the time people will still be standing there and be like, hey, look at me going to me, look at me doing this. And I'm like, your hands are like, yeah, what? And you're like, well, is that false grip? You're like, I don't know. Like, so you, you're already, you, you guys are, are, are well tuned in, which is good. So make sure your false grip is good. Where it wants to go, so you come and tell me it wants to slip out, yeah, that's, we, that's what we're all, we're all trying to fight against that. Once it slips, it slips, it slips. That true position that Tim's talking about out here, it really wants to slip even more. So your job, once you're comfortable with your hang, is can you do a little bit of a pull, and I want your thumb to touch your chest. If you start to get good, can you start from a slightly lower position, thumb touch chest. Yeah, as you get better, and I don't, want, don't gas yourself on these, not 10 reps, literally like one or two like I just did. And then if you, if, as you get better, the final part of this is then, can I thumb to chest and stay thumb to chest for a couple of seconds and then back down. The reason being, in the transition, you're going to go thumb to chest and you're going to go through. If when you get to here, you're used to just falling back down, when you get to your transition, you're going to want to try and come through, but you're going to start dropping and that elbow stays low. What did Tim say about the transition? That elbow's got to get stacked on top of the wrist. So I've got to be able to have some isometric strength at the top of my pull to be able to stay there, so a couple of seconds, potentially. When you go for your first ever one, which you're going to do in a minute, or a few minutes, you're going to go bang, 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 it's going to be, you're not going to mess about, you're not going to go slow, we're going to go for it quick, but having a little bit of strength at the top is good. Yeah, so can we do a little bit of a pull? Can you go from lower? Can you have a little bit of a hold at the top? Yeah? Question. One or two reps here, yeah? Is, is there a point in uh, drawing the, ring, the rings? Towards the center, or do you keep the, yeah, keep the distance? The yeah, keep so don't want the elbows flowing outside. Keep the elbows in nice and tight and compact. Ideally, we're going to almost about brush everything close. So elbows, rings are going to brush the body. Tim likes to has talked before about Superman ripping his <laughs> shirt open. <laughs> on uh, it's not his only Superman reference. On um, during that transition, but definitely because what we don't want to do is we don't want to go out here. We don't want the elbows wide. We don't want the hands going wide. Because none of us yet can do a crucifix and happy going to my grave not being able to do a crucifix. <laughs> That's in the impossible box. If you're struggling yeah. with the pull guys, let us know because we can put a band on and we can help you just get a look to so you can start to train it. So there's always scale it. So with, um, with the muscle up, I always like to imagine in my, my head these like three bars of the three sections of it. So the first bar is that, that pull up. The second bar is the transition, that middle section. And the third bar is the dip out of that. And the, what's the most difficult is this, that, that middle section, the transition. So what I like to try, in my, it might not make any sense to anyone, but in my mind, I like to think about trying to make this pull as high as possible and my dip as steep as possible so that distance between them in the transition is as easy as possible because it's the hardest bit, okay? So we've worked on that first pull, being able to pull nice and high, thumb to chest, not just chin to the wings, thumb to chest. If we can get, the higher we get, make that, the easier entering the transition is gonna be and having some strength at the top to pause for a little second before going back down and practicing our high pulls gives us that little bit of isometric strength to stay as we want to enter that transition. 
So we will we won't go in the sequential order of one, two, three. We're going to go now one, which was one the pull up. Now we're going to go to the last part, the dip, because we're going to leave the hardest part till last. And if you've never been on rings before, the first thing we need to do is just get comfortable with being on top of the rings. When you haven't done it before, they go all over the place because they can move wherever they want. Your, the stabilising muscles around your shoulder have a little bit of a party trying to decide um, what sort of sequence to fire in to keep you nice and, nice and controlled. But eventually, and it goes quite quick, it's a bit of a skill thing that you learn, your muscles learn how to fire in that. So, can you hold comfortably in there if that's good? Can we go into a dip? And then ideally, can we go dip? How deep can we go into our dip? Can we pause the bottom? That will be the end of my transition. And can I get out of that position? Turn it out if you can, nicely at the other top. Yeah? But the deeper you go, if you can't, if my dip is like here, that's all I can do. That means the end of your transition, you need to be that high. <laughs> and that ain't gonna happen. Yeah? So, it might be when we're learning, on these, once you get comfortable with the rings and you, you are you, you, you know you haven't done a lot of ring, you haven't done a lot of ring dips. That it might be that I get good at this full range and full control all the way down, and I just do the eccentric under control. If you can't get back up here, just so you're used to going to that deep position. Yeah. Have a quick go at that, and then we will uh, start to enter the tricky transition, which we will make very simple and easy. We're going to use some assistance to get us through this transition. We need to do, if you think of the transition being that tricky bit where you're, we're used to doing a lot of pulling and our pull ups ending at this point. We've taught the brain that. Whereas after I've finished my pull up, we should, we're just not necessarily wired up for that movement pattern. So doing something where we take the strength of the man out. So use the strongest band you want to allow you to get through the transition and feel what it's like for a pull up not to end there you can actually then take that elbow and stack it on top of the wrist now we don't want you to think about too much at all we're going to set up once we go through i'll just show you the setup the um, band is going to go around your bum make a little cradle so band goes on top of the ring put your hand on top as long as you don't let go of it it's not going to go anywhere the band again on the other ring hand on top yeah you're gonna, we talked about that false grip, is finish it, you, you're starting, you're putting your hand where you want to finish. So I just put my hand on top, I jump up, yeah, that's where I want to finish, that's my end of my dip position. So I sit off the band, I come round, I just make sure I maintain that false grip by cocking the wrist, and then that's me there. That's where you're going to start, not, that, not necessarily that turned out position to start with. And then I go for my thumb to chest. And then all I want you to do is thinking about throwing your head and chest between these rings. Thumb chest, get through. I like to imagine I'm heading a football. So I'm here, thumb chest, head through. Take advantage of the gap between the rings. Make it nice and snappy like that, get used to it. If you're happy pressing out, if you haven't got loads of strength for your dip, save that for if you're going to do the whole thing later. Things that happen, the rings move and all this, don't worry about that, that will just happen on its own if you chuck your head and your chest between the rings. That's all you need to worry about. And then a safety marker is keep them close. So when you go through, everything touching the body. Don't take them out here, no man's land. Yeah? <laughs> Bad things happen in no man's land. Yeah? Let's have a go, so have a go at that. Those that, we're gonna come around and help you, those that feel close, Oh, easy! 